Right, the new vented discs are fitted. Uh, the calipers are spaced and bolted back to the strut. Now the next thing I need to do is adjust the wheel bearings. So let's take a look. So I actually debated for a while about whether or not I was even going to do this video and that's basically because there's no specific setting or torque value I can give you for this. It's more about feel. Now feel is something that's difficult to get across on video obviously so I'm going to give it my best shot. Uh, I'm going to show you my personal way of adjusting wheel bearings and I guess if you're watching this I decided it was worth it. So I'm referring specifically to the taper roller style of wheel bearing here as found on the front wheels of the Capri uh, and the front wheels of many older rear wheel drive vehicles. Uh, trailers have them too. So this bearing basically consists of two conical shaped roller bearings. Uh, these run in racers in the hub and you adjust the preload on these bearings by tightening or loosening the hub nut itself. Pretty simple in concept but before I get to the nitty gritty of it First off, I'm going to show you how to check the current condition of your wheel bearing. So this is pretty simple. Jack the front of the car up so the wheel is off the ground. Now grasp the wheel firmly at the 12 and 6 o'clock position and try and rock the wheel back and forth. Now if the wheel bearing is adjusted correctly, you should be able to feel just a slight amount of play. Now I've set this up as the most likely scenario you're going to encounter for an incorrectly adjusted wheel bearing. And as you can probably see, and here, there is an excessive amount of play in this bearing, so this needs adjustment. And similarly, on the other end of the scale, a bearing that's too tight will have no play and could even restrict the rotation of the hub. Now this can lead to all kinds of problems like overheating and premature bearing failure. So once you've removed the wheel, this is what you're going to encounter. Now the only difference here is, I've removed the pads from the caliper. Uh, now this is purely for video purposes to eliminate the noise of the pads dragging against the disc. Now if this is your first time doing this you might want to do the same, it could give you a better feel for what's going on with the wheel bearing. So let's adjust this bad boy. Uh, first thing you need to remove is the dust cap, so work your way around the outside with a screwdriver and a hammer to pry it off. So now you've got the dust cap off, just wipe away any excess grease so you can see what's going on. Okay, so the nut we're going to use to adjust the preload on the bearing is locked in place by a catalated retainer and a split pin, so these need to be removed next. So the best way I find to do this is to lever the pin up using a screwdriver and then straighten it out the best you can with a pair of long nose pliers. Now grab the head of the pin with a pair of side cutters, jiggle it about a bit and then hit the side cutters with a hammer to remove the pin. And once that's removed you can slide the retainer off the nut and now you're ready to adjust the wheel bearing. So a good tip now if you've got a wheel with a hollow centre like I have is to bung the wheel back on there. So grab a couple of wheel nuts and make sure you bolt it down tight. So I've got my 27mm socket for the hub nut and the idea here is pretty simple. So tighten the nut to take out any play in the bearing and loosen it to do the opposite. Now I like to keep the wheel rotating as I do this just to make sure the bearing seat correctly. So do this a couple of times to get a feel for it. Spin the wheel, tighten the nut until it starts to pinch the bearing and then back it off again. So I've done that a few times and now I'm going to tighten the nut until it pinches the bearing and then just slacken it off a quarter to an eighth of a turn. Uh, now this is pretty vague I know but at this point you should be more concerned about how the bearing feels. So what I'm looking for here is a wheel that rotates freely and smoothly and has a very small amount of play when I rock it back and forth. Uh, now as I said earlier, this is the feel part of the operation, so take your time, 
uh, and try it a few times until you're happy. All right, that feels pretty good. And what I've got there, or what I can feel, is just a little bit of play as I rock it back and forth. So now you've adjusted the bearing and you're happy with it. Uh, to make things less awkward, remove the road wheel. And now you've got to refit the castellated retainer. Uh, now you may have to play around with the orientation of this because you need to line up the hole in between the castles. Then you'll find a lot of the time it doesn't match. That looks pretty good. Now if you're unlucky enough that no matter which way you put this retainer you can't get it lined up then in my experience it's always better to slacken the nut a fraction rather than tighten it so just bear that in mind. So yeah mine's lined up and now the next thing I need to do is knock the split pin back in and as you might be able to see I'm using a new one. Great, that ain't going nowhere. All right, that's the hard part over with. Uh, I've just covered everything in a smear of grease there. And now I need to refit the dust cap. Use a rubber mallet for this if you've got one so you don't ding it up. And then the last thing you need to do, obviously, is put your wheel back on. Well, I'm not going to show you that. I think I've subjected you to enough wheel on, wheel off footage for one video. Uh, but yeah, once you've done that, that's essentially it. Job done. Uh, and I hope this video gives you the confidence to tackle the job yourself. Now, just remember, I've only shown you my way of doing this here. I'm sure other people will have different ways of doing it. Um, and heck, once you get to grips with it, you might decide my way is useless and you come up with your own method and that's totally unacceptable I'm joking obviously now something I never mentioned was if you encounter a scenario where no amount of tightening will take the play out of the bearing then there's a good chance your bearings are shot and these need to be replaced along with the racers but that's an entirely different story altogether so yeah if you like the video show the channel some love click the like button below and I will see you next time